And welcome to the Fat Squirrel Speaks. Today is Tuesday. August 13th. Do you see how subtly I looked at what day it was? And this is episode 76. Does that sound good? Totally 76. Hi, how are you? I am Amy Beth. <coughs> Excuse me. Also known as the Fat Squirrel on Ravelry and the Fat Squirrel, S Q R R L, on Instagram. And Plurk via Instagram. Okay. Okay. Hi, how are you? I already said that I know, right? Um. Oh, there was a thank you and I forgot to write down the thank you. I'm sorry. Thank you, person. I'll get to next week. Um. There are thank yous, though, involved in shenanigans. So let's get to it. Okay. Okay. Shenanigans. So, Yarny Shenanigans of the Week or Stitches. Stitches Midwest Show. Were you there? I said hi to you. Hi. Are you doing okay still? So many of you said hello, thank you. It's so fun. Some of you even squeed. So exciting. <laughs> um, so I was at Stitches Midwest with the lovely Joanna Spring of Knitspin Farm. And Corey. Hi Corey. Corey the girl. We carpooled. It's fantastic. Actually, Joanna's husband drove us because he's fabulous because quite frankly I'll be honest with you my husband has to drive to Chicago sometimes for his work and he always complains about it and I'm like whatever you know yes dear bad, 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 bad. but secretly I'm like come on what's the big deal oh my gosh big deal <sighs> it's awful <laughs> now this is no insult to the city of Chicago because clearly it's so fabulous everyone to, wants to be driving there like, that's how wonderful it is. It's so wonderful that people are willing to put up with those shenanigans of the traffic variety. So it's clearly the best city ever. Never. Never again. <laughs> Even as a passenger, it was frustrating, the traffics. What? So thank goodness I wasn't driving. I think normally I'm a very confident driver and I feel like I could pretty much go anywhere I needed to. You know, like I feel like... I'm kind of sassy in that way. I don't think I'll be going there anytime soon on my own. <laughs> ah, it was crazy. So anyway, but Stitches itself was awesome. Yay. There was lots of yarny goodness. There was lots of people goodness. At the end, I kind of spent all of my dollars in quite ridiculous ways, quite frankly. Totally ridiculous. Because before I went, I made the list, right? You do the thing. Where you make the list and you make your budget and you think, okay, I want to try to get a sweater for my husband and I want to try to get yarn for a good ale and I want to try to get yarn for this sweater and maybe if they have a superwash for the kiddo, I'll get that. And then you have like a whole list and you got things in your head and single skeins are not ever anywhere on that list at all. No, no. But then you get there and suddenly you realize that, okay, this is my naive thought about stitches. I kind of thought that there would just be all the yarn in the entire world there. I know. Isn't that naive? I, I don't know. I thought there'd be like yarn ambassadors from companies. What's wrong with me that I thought that? But I mean, I knew I could have looked at the list. And I did look at the list of people, the vendors. And yet I still was like, hmm, not all the yarn in the world is here. Oh, what a bummer. But I really did. I kind of thought everybody would like have a booth. Like I com was completely confident that I would find some of the Brooklyn Tweed yarn. Of course I'll find that. I need four skeins of the fingering as a treat, but I want to look at it and see it and touch it and go, ooh, ah, no. <laughs> Cascade had a booth there. There was not even any eco wool in it. What? 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 Luckily, all your faces were there because otherwise, boo. <laughs> not at all. It was just like not what I expected. But it was still fabulous and lovely. So I ended up spending all of my dollars not at all on the things I thought I would. Because I was all psyched up, right? I was psyched up. I had done like a bigger update than normal just because I was like, all right, I can't squirrel some away. I was all psyched up. So then my dollars just went, Pachoom! even though it wasn't necessarily things I went to buy. <laughs> but I have no remorse, really. I mean, I have some like, oh, you ridiculous person. But no real like deep lying self-hatred. So that's good. 
So we'll talk about that later in the show in the I Bought All the Things in the World segment. <laughs> um, we will also have a shop up or a self promotion shameless style. That's the words in the wrong order. Um, yeah. But I do have a thank you I can tell you right now. Guess what I got in the mail? Not only did I get this in the mail, which was super exciting, but I totally got communication beforehand. Now, Kirby Werby's lovely face contacted me and was like, I would like to make a colorway and I know that you don't like as bright a color as everything I do. So like, what would you like? And she specifically said, and you don't need to mention it on the podcast or anything. Look at that. Like, I'm not going to mention it. What? With your face. So this is Kirby Werby. It's self-striping. And this is her Merino nylon base. So it's 450 yards. And it's 75 Superwash Merino, 25 nylon. And it's called, I'm ready for fall, y'all. Do you see it? It's beautiful orange of the rusty variety, but not like too brown, just brown enough. And a beautiful brown, and a beautiful gold, and a beautiful teal. I'm so excited! So thank you. I'm sure you can get some in her shop, which is kirbywerbyarns.etsy.com. Okay, let's talk about being spitting. There's no spitting this week. Zero. I was sewing a lot of people. Hush your faces. I do have a knitting finished object. And it's super fabulous. I don't know if you recall, but I may have been knitting on um, Paula Emmons Feasley's um, Ellison Bay shawl. This is with my um, Lavinia colorway that is hand spun and Fiber Superwash Merino. I got eight ounces because I'm terrible at getting yardage. So I just know I need to get eight ounces if I want to do anything of substance or some people would say substance, <laughs> substance, whatever. Um, so I got eight ounces of the Superwash Merino and it is by, of course, Into the World. Pause. And it was for the Knittable Sal, but look at it. What up? A blip picks up. <clears throat> so, I will confess, this is not my typical shape. You see, it's more of a... Well, no, I guess this is a shape that I enjoy. Because I thought for a while that it was going to be more of a, a half circle... But it is definitely longer in proportions than a half circle. And you can see it has the different, it's not like a pie increase. So I kind of just thought, it, I'm, just, I'm probably gonna give that one away. And it's still an option if my soul feels like it needs to be good. But I might listen to the devil on the other side. Okay. Because look, it sits right there. I'm totally pleased with it. Okay. So yeah, I don't know. I shouldn't keep it. I have like a babillion shawls. But uh, I'll give it away. I will. I don't know what kids say. Maybe I'll make something extra fabulous instead of it to give away. Or maybe I'll just keep everything. Duh. I'm gonna sit out like the fattest redheaded dragon. Arr. Like that. Maybe a hobbit will come and get it. I would totally give it to a hobbit. I mean, it would be way too big for a hobbit, but I would totally give it to one. So you can, you can, it sits perfectly like this. Perfectly. Paula of the geniosity face, also knitting pipeline. Or you could totally do this if you wanted to. If you wanted to be fancy. You could totally do that. Because that's where, I, that's how I wear all of my shawls. Like that. Around the neck. But this one, it has additional versatility, kids. So you can wear old school or new school. Right? Because that's how Paula is. 
She's both old school and new school at the same time. Because she's magic. It's true. Sorry, my phone's ringing and then my answering machine's going to go off. It's going to be a hot mess. I'm sorry. Um, but then I have other things that are in progress. I won't show you everything that I have going because, quite frankly, some things did not get enough progress to make it at all reasonable. I'm trying to talk really loud. Like, I feel like if I could put this here, you might not hear. It's my husband saying, hello. Hello, are you there? Hello, do you hear him? We'll just leave him hanging. <laughs> Does he not know what I do? Does he not know? Anyway, not that I do it at any sort of regular time, so it's really not his fault. But it is surely. So this is Briar Rose, unknown colorway, 4th of July base, which is 100% superwash merino and is very, this ball is super tightly wound. I don't know what was going on. Because even though I've used a bunch of it, you still can't, it doesn't feel at all hollowed. But this yarn is, I love this base. It was very tempting not to buy, um, Blue Moon Fiber Arts has a similar base. Because, can you see? You can kind of see. You really can't see. It's like a four, is it four plies? I think it's four plies. Yeah, it's four plies and three of them are lighter colored and one of them is a darker color. So not only is there crazy variegation in the dye, but then there's also just a constant little bit of a, oh, you can kind of see it right there, right? There's a little blip throughout the whole thing. And it's, it's very springy. I dig it. Dig it. Her colors are a little varied for me for a garment, but man, it's tempting. Tempting. <clears throat> so here is my, Look at me trying to figure out what the right side is, because I'm slow. This is my Brookless, which of course the Knittables, Diane, and Yarnivore, Sadie, also of Knitter's Nightmare Yarns, are doing, or perhaps have already done. I can't remember. Here it is so far. And I am knitting that on US, I believe sevens. Yes, US sevens. So it is, I don't know, I am enjoying this, enjoying the pants off of it. It's enough that there's enough variation. I have no idea, it's gonna be huge because again, I feel like, I feel like I haven't used anything. Now this is a giganto skein. I think it's like 500 and, I have it right here, 560 yards, but that's about what the thing calls for. And it's definitely a beefy worsted. But I don't know what's going on with me lately, but I've been having like serious worsted anxieties. Because worsted yarn can mean like two completely different yarns. Worsted weight, excuse me. Like you got a Cascade 220, I don't know, I'm almost, I'm just throwing that in the DK bin. That's what I'm doing right now. In my head, Cascade 220 is now DK. Right. <laughs> and then you have this, which again is, is a beefier, more substantial. And then you have Peace Leaf, which Peace Fleece, or better, I think Beaver Slide, because Peace Fleece is technically considered an Aran on their worst weight, is considered an Aran on Ravelry. I can't remember if Beaver Slide is or not, but they're again much, now they're not as like squishy as this because they're a different prep, but uh, there's just so much variation in the term worsted. It's very, it's very distressing. It keeps me up at night, kids. It keeps me up. It doesn't really keep me up, but I'm just reclassifying yarns in my head. Casky 220. They don't know it, but they're now a DK. They don't know that. So there's that. <clears throat> but, oh, and the reason I say that. Okay, so that's the reason I tirated for a moment. Really, this should just be called tangential tirade, the whole podcast, because that's all I do. It's just parenthetical up in your business. But the reason I mention that is because I feel like this this pattern calls for worsted. I feel like if you used Cascade 220, you would get a completely different thing. Completely. And that thing I would not like as much. I definitely want a beefier worsted for this one. And it, I like it to be squishy for this. It's the yarn for the thing is a thing. It's a thing, people. It matters. Can't just go willy-nilly. Oh, 
Oh, worsted? Okay, I'll use beaver slide. I don't think I would like beaver slide. I love beaver slide. I don't think I would like it in that brickless. I just don't think it would. I definitely would not like peace fleece, but I love peace fleece. But I would not like it in, in the brickless. Mm -mm. That's what I'm saying. Cautionary tale. Okay. Now, you have not technically seen these. Oh, I forgot to bring the ball band to tell you any sort of helpful information. Excuse me. I am knitting another pair of seamless Salomas because I am insane. But these are knit with the Barocco Vintage Chunky. And that pattern calls for worsted. Again, the whole worsted stress. I guess it just depends on what you like your knitting to feel like. I don't. A lot of my knitting, I don't want to feel all open-y. don't want the ethereal, ephemeral, in the ether. How many three E words can I get? I don't want the that word, that feeling. I want, like, for a lot of things. So that's, I guess that's my problem. I just have an idea of what I want it, the, te the texture and the density to be, and usually that's not what those skinny worsteds give me. So that's all to say that these are actually written for worsted, the Seamless Salomas, which is by, of course, Megan of Stockinette Zombies and Stockinette Zombies and Resta 1313 of Girl Cave Bags, who I like to sometimes call Rista because 1313, because it's festive. She seems more like, like that. I'm going to call her Rista instead of Rista, which seems more subdued. Just saying. So... What the, it, the only adjustments I'm making, because these are a chunky weight. I secretly think it's just Aaron. I know, right? Just, I am knitting mine on, I think US sixes. Am I a liar? I'm sorry, I'm clicking the thing. Again, with my old lady eyes. Evidently, I'm going to need bifocals any minute now. US sixes. So I am, instead of knitting my size, I'm knitting one size smaller. And that seems to be working out perfectly with the same depth as the as my correct size. That seems to be working out for me. And I'm using way less yarn than I thought I would. So this is one slipper. And this is how much I have left. Now, I have size 11 feet, so I have gigantic feet. So I do think I will need the two skeins because I, I don't think there's an, I, I think this is heavier. I, I haven't weighed. I think I will definitely need two skeins, but I was afraid I might need up to three. Definitely not going to need three. Because it's chunky, it's only like a hundred and something yards. And I do apologize, I don't have the ball band, so I can't tell you what color it is. But I'm enjoying those. They're very squishy and wonderful and good. So those will be my Christmas knitting. I got my giant box of yarn from Webbs with all of my slipper colors in the Barocco chunky vintage style and that's one that's not 100% wool but I am ma making these and I usually just try to find super wash wool but I could not find super wash in that weight that I, had a texture that I enjoyed so this one has petroleum in it as nylon I can't remember how much but it's acrylic style wool but I think it's more wool than acrylic but does it really matter at this point no fossil fuel user of myself but they are going to people who will definitely not hand wash slippers. I would not ask anybody to hand wash a slipper, which is usually why I end up making felted ones. But I have like 13 slippers to make and I'm, I'm not making 13 pairs of felted slippers because I want to enjoy the holidays and not hate the people I'm giving gifts to. Last work in progress is a new one. So I have a sweater on the needles, right? I have my sew -a, which I'm enjoying quite a lot. But I just had like the fall itch, right? I needed a fall, well, really this is like a winter sweater. I don't even know what I'm thinking. But I had the itch. I had to have like the big heavy woolly sweater. Like some people would call it a Rhinebeck sweater if they were going to Rhinebeck, which I would like to be, but don't know if I will be, but maybe. I'm trying really hard. I know, right? <gasps> I was trying to explain to, to somebody that um, I should really go because this may be my only chance to go, right? 
any minute now, you guys are going to be like, we are done with her bags. We have one. We're done. And then next year, I won't be able to go. So I should totally go this year, right? Whatever. <laughs> oh, I'm completely self-indulgent. <laughs> but mostly I'm not. I totally am. Have you seen me? <laughs> I am the definition of self-indulgent. Anyway. I'm trying to get to the picture, but my thingy is off. Oh, that's not an effective picture at all. I am knitting the chocolate stout and that's by baby cocktails. And it's this. It's everything in a sweater I'm not supposed to make. It's air and weight. It's thickly textured. It has pockets on my hips. Still making it. <laughs> Sometimes you know better. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. So it has lots of good details, though, and I'm excited about it. And quite frankly, the ceiling of the deal was, because I'm ridiculous, the ceiling of the deal. Here's another picture. Was that I was watching Murder, She Wrote, because that's how I roll. Justified and Murder, She Wrote. Somebody's not getting killed. I'm not watching a show. Right? I'm so not the hippie I want to be. I was watching Murder, She Wrote, and I was, like, debating about those pockets because, like, maybe everything else I could excuse, but the pockets right there, I'm like, Aaron Waite pockets on my business? Like, why not just put them right on my butt? Like, let's just make it crazy. So I was like, oh. but then Jessica spoke to me in a vision in that she was wearing... <laughs> Angela Lesbury was wearing a sweater that was very similar to that. It was also brown and it had the pockets and it had the shawl collar. And I was like, well, pfft, clearly now I need to make that. This is how my brain works, people. It's a party all the time. <laughs> so I am making this. You're, it's totally not going to read at all. And it is not the most dimensional color. This is Peace Fleece Worsted slash Aaron. Um... In the brownie with, see, maybe that's what it is. Maybe I grew up knitting, like I had my formative knitting years before Ravelry, of course. So I just had to trust that the company was telling me what technical weight it was. When they, Peace Lace, I love them, but they evidently they lie a little bit because it's Aaron. Who knows? Whatever. It's all, whatever. I'm just, I'm mathy. It's hard for me sometimes. Everything needs to be in a box. So this one is... Peace Fleece. This is their, a new colorway called Brownie, Brownies? I think it's plural. Brownies with nuts. And what it is, is just a very, it looks like brownie batter. It's that brown. It's very dark, chocolatey brown. Um, like a blacker based brown with little bits of like, I would say off whitish fleck I'm trying to get to a fleck, but they're not, there's not a ton of flecks. It's not like a tweed. Like, it's not like a real nippy, um, because it's, some people, I didn't realize that, but some people, the tweed freaks them out and they feel like they have to pick out the little, the little different colored bits. But I'm so glad I read that because I was thinking about making my husband a sweater with tweed and it occurred to me that he would be that person because he's very like, he's always picking hair off me because I shed like a cat evidently. Um, but he's very like. I don't know. He's not particular at all, but that's like his thing. So it occurred to me that he probably would do that. So I'm glad that some other people had mentioned that they have that problem with weed. So this is my chocolate stout thus far. I have worked way too much on it. It is knit in one piece to the armpits and then separated out for front and back. I think it has a sewn in set in shoulder set in sleeve. I think what I'm going to do though, cause I, I really, the thought of sewing in a set in sleeve, I don't know why, but that intimidates me a lot. I think it's cause I've did one a long time ago and it was not pleasant. Um, it just makes me, I don't know why it's ridiculous. It just makes me a little bit nervous. Um, so I think what I might do, don't hold me to it. I think what I might do is do the 
is knit the sleeves, like knit everything to the armpits, sleeves and body, and then um, do a set in sleeve, but as one piece. Does that make sense? I never knew to do that, but the Laura Chow pattern that I did recently, and I have, I think that's her name, the Bellevue is constructed like that. It's constructed as a set in sleeve, but you knit it in one piece. Now, some people are like, well, I'm just doing it like a yoke. Well, obviously this is patterning, so that would throw that off. But personally for me, I do not, yoke sweaters and I do not get along. Because of the way my body is made, can I do this? It's gonna bother you. Oh, I can't go it any lower. Because of the way my body is made, I do not have particularly wide shoulders, especially not for my body size, okay? <laughs> but I do not have particularly wide so shoulders, and because I am both busty and have big arms, my body shape is like neck and then like this. It's not like neck, this. You know what I mean? Like my shoulders are very slopey. And so for some reason, that and a yoke sweater do not get along. I thought maybe I was just being crazy. And I found an old yoke sweater that I made when I was in college and tried it on. So not flattering. It didn't help that I wasn't wearing a bra when I tried it on. Because nothing looks good that way. But <laughs> it's just not as good of a, it does not look as nice on me as a set in sleeve. It's so strange that that would make such a difference, but it does. Um, and so, and this also, and let me also clarify, this was a yoke sweater that was actually like the, the Fair Isle yoke, like the Icelandic style sweater. So, I mean, it had a pattern that, it, that emphasized that shape. So not only is that graphic shape on my body not flattering, but even a plain non-patterned yoke sweater just does not seem to fit me as well. I think it just... And maybe if I played with it and tweaked it, it would, but I'm not in that mood at the moment. So, tangential tirade. Um, so that's why I, that's, this would not work with the yoke at all because of the patterning. But that's why I avoid, avoid yoke sweaters for my specific body type. They look lovely on most other humans. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to do the set and sleeve in the, in one piece, not in the round because I'm not sticking, but in one piece. I'm so sorry. It keeps measuring her. Um, this suggests a cable cast on. I actually did the tubular cast on because I like the way it looks. And it's, it's pretty stretchy, but I just, it's one by one rib at the bottom. And if you got to go through the pain in the neck of doing one by one rib, <laughs> then you should at least get to use the fun tubular cast on, which I enjoy. Some people do not like it, but I like it. So I have the pockets. See? There's the pockets. Um, things I did different with the pockets. I scaled my pocket up by 20% because lovely t uh, baby cocktails. Those pockets look darling on her, but she's literally probably only what? less than two thirds, one half to two thirds as wide as I am. So I felt like my pockets probably needed to be a little bit bigger. Also, I have giant like ham hands. So I felt like my pockets needed to be a little bit better, bigger. <clears throat> so I scaled them up 20%. I also made them um, an inch or a half an inch deeper. Or I can't remember if I made them a half an inch or an inch deeper than suggested, which means I also made the ribbing that much longer. Um, so I scaled them up 20%. I made them deeper, either half or an inch. I'm not sure. And then, oh, and then I also moved them over a little bit. So in the pattern, like there's button band, there's a teeny bit, and then there's pocket. So mine is not like that much bigger, but I scooted mine over seven stitches. And this is a worsted weight, like five stitches to the inch because of the ribbing. So seven inches, are like a, like one point almost one and a half inches, I moved them over. I probably actually could have moved them over even a little bit more, but I was kind of nervous to do that. So I moved them over in a, one and a half inches, like out. Because again, what I, do, I don't need to pockets like in the middle of my sweater, in the, you know, in the middle of my thighs. So it won't be quite in the middle, it'll be a little bit closer. It won't be quite in the middle of my thigh, it'll be a little bit closer to center, but. So those are all the things I did. did you, I felt like I just talked way too long about that. Is it okay? I'm sorry if I talked too long. So 
it doesn't seem like I got a lot done, but I did use like a full skein. Let's see, you're like, we don't care. Don't take the time to do it. Hush, I feel like I need to explain myself. I was sewing a lot, hush. But, oh, I can't find it. There's too many ends and whatnots. Oh, here it is, right here. So there was where I joined in my new skein. Right there. So I did a skein in quite a bit. And this is kind of, I wanted to make a fall sweater, but oof, this is a little hard on the hands. It's a little hard on the hands. Um, and I, did I say I was knitting that on US 4s? That is a ridiculously small needle for piece lace, air and weight. Um, but one by one ribbing, I have to have it on a small needle or it looks like a hot mess. I even tried to do twisted ribbing. Um, I do every other row twisted to see if that would help out my ribbing. And it just, it looked ridiculous. So, see, and you can, well, you probably won't be able to see. Maybe. So this is, I did the pockets first. This is the twisted ribbing. And this is the plain ribbing. Oh yeah, so you can, can you see the difference? You can kind of see the difference. But the twisted ribbing was much more, had much more variation and depth. And I just didn't like it as much. It looked, I think it would have drawn even more attention to my giant behind. Oh, another thing I did is I totally did darts of the butt. Um, because I won't make mine quite as long as hers. Like I still will probably only make mine just slightly lower than mid hip, uh, just because. Um, so I actually put some decreases and they're totally off center, but I didn't realize it until I started to put the pockets in, but they're not, they're not glaring. I don't think until you see me and then you'd be like, Oh my gosh. But I totally put in some darting in the butt, the ribbing. Um, I decreased every third right side row in the in pattern right there, which supposed was supposed to be like this far apart, like in the center of my butt, but maybe it'll be a little bit like this. I probably have an asymmetrical butt. It'll probably work out fine. <laughs> I'm saying butt a lot in this episode, aren't I? That's my treat to you. Um, so that's the other thing I did. And I decreased a total of eight stitches. And then I decreased, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, another thing. This is the longest set sweater segment ever. Sorry. Another thing I did is she actually has the pattern not ending. Like, she doesn't, the cardigan. So here, okay, so this is the seam. Like, this is the button band that you're looking at right here. She doesn't have it mirrored. Like there's a flat section and a twisty section in that, in that stitch pattern. So you start with the flat section, then you do the twisty section all the way around. And then you end with the twisty section. That's kind of weird. I'm sure you would never, ever see it. Ever, ever, ever see it. But to me as a knitter, it's weird. So I did that too. Also, another thing I didn't do, she has you do a weird salvage, which I'm sure there's a point to, and I'll probably kick myself later, but I was too lazy to read ahead. That's right, I totally was. So I just did my normal two-stitch stockinette salvage, because that's how I like to do things the way I'm familiar with and may regret later. <laughs> so those are all the million things I did. And we're only like six inches into the sweater. What's going to happen? Or some of those were the things I was planning to do. Mm. Okay, so that's all the stuff. Now I have stuff I bought. This will be the longest episode in the world. Okay, do I see what I bought? If you don't, I totally understand. Sometimes I have to turn off enabling. Because... So uh, this is full disclosure. This should be everything I purchased. I'm, I, normally I don't show you all of like the commercially yarns I purchase, but they're all in the same bag, so I just will. And I think actually most of them are not necessarily commercial. This one's kind of a little bit. <clears throat> I just like to talk to hear my own voice, evidently. So, here we go. <laughs> the first, well, not the first thing. This is not in order of purchase. I bought from <clears throat> The Fold, because of course she has all the blue moon. You can see and touch it. This is BFL Sport, 
in the Valkyrie Fledge colorway. <clears throat> it's 661 yards and eight ounces. Remember like two seconds ago, I said I wasn't gonna buy any crazy multicolored screens for a while. That's all I bought. I know, right? It's ridiculous. In my defense, there is none. It's very smushy. <laughs> and I was loving that brick list so much. I was like, oh, I can make another one, even though this is sport. I can make something similar, and that would be a great holiday gift, maybe, or also for myself. Mm, so I, don't, I love the way it feels. It feels lovely in every way. <laughs> yes, it's 100% blue face luster. <clears throat> then I also bought, this is actually one of the only things I intended to buy, not necessarily for this yarn, but for this garment. I wanted to make another good ale. <clears throat> for my size, it's about 1,200 yards of sport. I bought the Woohoo! I think this might actually be, now that I look at it, I can't remember. Is Amy Froggy Monkeys the same color that she made her sweater with? I just want to be her. We, also, we already have matching socket hats. We could have this too. <laughs> Hers is not a good deal. But this is the Woo Boo in the Spinel, S P I N E L, Spine L, Spinel, colorway. Um, so it's 60% merino, 40% bamboo, and it's 620 yards for eight ounces. And again, this is a sport, but it is a nice, beefy sport weight. I would say bordering on DK. Okay. Okay. So, oh, it feels really good. <laughs> so I had intentions to buy like three sweaters worth. I bought one. Instead, I bought Insanity. Whatever. And then I also bought a Rare Gems. So this is Socks That Rock, medium weight, um, 405 yards. It's crazy. Nuts. Everything. I totally had that justification of like, I'm really liking these Martina Bemba shawls. Crazy Martina Bemba. Ooh, and then I bought this. Oh my gosh, this was so extravagant. Bayou Basin was there. This is Bayou Bliss, which is 50% Yak Down and 50% Cormo. I love Cormo, period. And I really felt like I needed to support any company that would put Cormo in a yarn. Self-righteous shopping. That's the way to go. Um, so this is, this is only two ounces, which is 150 yards. It'll be a tiny hat. <laughs> or maybe some mitts. But oh my gosh, it is gloriously squishy and soft. Gloriously. <laughs> I dig it. They had, this was the least extravagant of all of the options. It was also the only one I was interested in because it had Cormo. The Yak Down was like secondary to me. I know, I could totally spin Cormo and I have some fleece over there, some CVM Cormo, and I'm gonna spin it, but I love Cormo. So, A, it was squishy and it was very soft, but B, I really need to support a company that was willing to put Cormo in their yarn. Don't judge. Trying to see if they have a, ah, they totally have a website, but what is it? Bayou Basin Ranch. It is BayouBasinRanch.com. You can't see that. I'm just pretending. Um, so they're also having a cow. Okay, sorry. Not sure you can find that out. They have a Ravelry group. Okay, so then. Okay, so then. Cloud Lover was there. I really like Cloud Lover. I only have, only spun a few of her braids. Actually, just one, I think. And it was actually one I totally bought before I was a spinner. 
bought it to make doll hair with or something because I was on a crazy Waldorf kick. My kid does not like dolls. I had, it was hard to face that. Not that I liked dolls, but I wanted her to like those dolls because they're awesome. But anyway, I was on a doll making kick, so I decided to buy that because it was like orangey red and maybe it could be hair. But then I languished until I learned to spin and then I spun it. And actually I made it into a Laura Linneman hat. You don't need to know any of that information, sorry. But I keep looking at her site in this color particularly. I keep looking at it and being like, I'm going to buy that. And then I don't buy it. So I figured I was there and it was in the person's. I should just buy it. Right? Supporting small business. So this is Cloud Lover. This is her 100% Merino. And this is the Decay colorway. Four ounces. I should just never say anything on this show because then I just have to recant it. Obviously, I'm never going to stop buying multicolored things because they're exciting to buy. Just because I need to stop buying them doesn't mean that I'm going to. This is the next one I bought. This is her Ramboulet base. So, Ramboulet is so fun. This is the Lord Grantham colorway and it's Ramboulet. I didn't buy it because it was Lord Grantham, but I'll say that after I picked it up and looked at it, it didn't hurt. That pretty. <gasps> I'm having a total freaky, like I have to knit all of the things. I mean, I operate at a baseline if I want to knit the things, but it's become like a more physical and visceral need as of late. Okay, then the last part is what's ridiculous. Okay, you didn't think that was ridiculous, but it was. It totally was. This is really ridiculous. Okay, so Miss Babs was totally SSK, and I didn't buy anything from her there because it was crazy. I mean, it wasn't crazy, but I was just, you know, and I was being good. I wasn't trying to buy crazy yarns. I bought some from Punky because I love her face. I was trying to be good and not buy crazy stuff because I had made that decision, and then that stupid brickless thing happened, and it all went out the window. All went out the window. Diane and Sadie. I blame all of this on you. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> but you were a gate. You offered the gateway drug that was the brickless. I'll show it all you once because I'm not even pretending that I didn't buy four individual skeins of crazy colored yarn at Miss Babs. Four. All different bases, all different colors. In my defense, there is none. I don't think I really have that many different colors of skate crazy yarn. I'm just going to pretend that I don't. <laughs> <laughs> and I want 75 hats all of a sudden. And most of the yarns I have in stash are very wooly yarns, which don't always make the happiest hats. So there. This is Miss Babs hand dyed. Okay, this is the Northumbria DK. It's hand painted four ply BFL. It's 240 yards. It's North Amber, it's Northumbria DK, but does it have a colorway? Dreamweaver, evidently, is the colorway. There's no, you can't tell how awesome it is. Don't even judge me for buying it because it's extra super awesome in person. <sighs> Four hats for myself. <laughs> then, this is Northumbria fingering. So this is her VFL fingering. It's 437 yards of 100% superwash. No, just 100% blue blue face luster. And this is the Zombie Games colorway. These are all Babettes that I bought because I'm ridiculous. Which a Babette for Miss Babs means it's like a don't count on two skeins from the same colorway name being anywhere near each other, which is true. Read as you can't make a sweater with it unless you're just total crazy face. Or you can pull it off, which I can't. Right. I just want to put it on like a spit and have it revolve. So then, where to go? This is her cosmic hand painted sock yarn, 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. 400 yards of, oh, this is the Cosmic Base, and this is the Zombie Prom colorway. 
I coveted it for a long time before I bought it. Remember, I talked about it even. Don't judge me. Judge me all you want. It's okay. Just don't tell me you did. Be good Midwesterners. <laughs> then. <laughs> I totally broke down. She had deep sea jellyfish. And this is really, this I think was the only one I could find in deep sea jellyfish. Because I looked. Because I have been wanting this colorway. I think actually for longer even than SSK. Before that. Somebody else made something with it. I've wanted it. Oh, was that stinking Leslie? That Nick girl. She made her shawl with the deep sea jellyfish colorway. Her color affection. So this one is the Yummy Base, which is a three-ply superwash sport yarn. And this is actually a fatty. It's 335 yards, 5.2 ounces of sport weight. Ridiculous. So yeah, there's that about all the stuff. Okay, so that's all about all the stuff segment. Now we move on to the oh my gosh, this episode is too long, but I still have to make this apology really fast. Um, there was a shop update last week, and there was a problem with the update. In that it was supposed to happen at 9 p.m. Eastern, and it didn't actually happen until about 10:30. I had computer issues, and so I could not access the interwebs. I do not have a phone in the talks space, so that couldn't happen. Um. And my child was already in bed, so I could not drive to hijack Wi-Fi. I'm very, very sorry. I didn't I didn't even think about it as I hit the like update. I just figured, oh, these will probably stay in the shop for a really long time because people may have tried at nine and then just been like, yeah, they're not there, whatever. Some of you actually kept trying for like an hour and a half. I'm really, really sorry. I'm really sorry. Bless your hearts. But not in that can just no. Let's let's clarify. That's bless your hearts in the nice way, not the like, oh, you poor simpletons way. Bless your hearts, though. I feel really, really bad. So I'm sorry. Um, I am very much trying to have a September 1st or not September 1st, but the first update in September will be autumn colored bags. <laughs> I like the prints quite a bit. Um, and I'm very, my mother will, has agreed to help me out for a couple of weeks sewing wise. So I'm going to try very, very hard to have the September, the first update in September be kind of big. Um, some of them may be considered, some of them may not be finished and therefore be listed as pre-orders. That's the only way I can do it. Um, the bags are very time intensive. I know some of you are upset that I do not do pre-order or that I do not do, um, custom orders and then I do not do like a pre-order system with like an open slot. I can't. And I'm very sorry that it's inconvenient. Um, but the reality is that those bags are very time intensive and I'm the only one sewing them. And I just cannot make a hundred bags. I can't make a hundred bags. I can't. There's just no way. So that's why I have not done a pre-order situation because it would still be a limited number because what I'm doing now is like literally the most I can do without being insane. And in fact, I am actually being insane. There are dishes, so many dishes, <laughs> so many dishes. Um, and this place kind of looks like a bomb has gone off. Um, so I am doing literally all I can. And I apologize if that's frustrating because you, you would like to purchase a bag and you can't. I promise that any minute, just like with any popular thing, it'll become less, much less popular in a little while. So I promise, like I promise, I'm, it's, it's, the glamour will wear off. <laughs> and by then it might wear off for you too, I won't judge. Um, but so please understand that I, I'm not trying to, I am in no way like doing some weird economics with like supply and demand and hoarding things. I, I am not, I'm literally doing as much as I can. Um, and that's just all I can do, but hopefully, the last couple weeks of August and the first couple weeks of September, I will have a helper. And so maybe we can get some more out for the first of September. All right. I think that's all. It should be, right? It's the longest episode ever. <sighs> okay. I will totally talk to you next week. Bye.